Hello, 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 and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Uncovering Greatness podcast. As always, I am your host, Sully, and today, again, finally, after two weeks out, Nicole Mitchell is back in the hot seat. Super excited to have her here, because it's my favorite time of the year. Sorry, I should have actually started off with festive greetings. <laughs> I find it so crazy when people do that in November. <laughs> you got your Christmas tree. <laughs> Why not? Because <laughs> I'm lazy <laughs> and it's November. <laughs> uh, but uh, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Nicole Mitchell is the lead processor at Uncovering Greatness, and as a processor, what she does is she helps you get out, of, out helps you get out of your own way. But better put, she does what therapists do only better. <laughs> I'm going to put that on a t-shirt and give it to you. <laughs> Nicole, how are you doing? How goes it? Very good, thank you. <laughs> so, we are in that, that, that time period, that time of year, um, festive season. People are going, people are excited, going on holiday, spending money, buying gifts. What is something you see during this time period, from a, especially as a processor? Like, what are, what are some of the things you see which you kind of would like to not not caution people away from, but just bring people's awareness to? Yeah, so I think the first thing that comes to mind is traditions and what are your traditions? And it's so interesting, like, I mean, we joke about um, Christmas trees being up mm. and you go into the the shops and the Christmas decorations are up and and it is it's just interesting one of the things that I observe is just the different behaviors and how they can combine people or separate people and and I say that because when like our next-door neighbors are not Christians who believe in Christmas they are Muslims they have their own stuff yeah and and particularly this time of the year when we've just had Eid and we've got um, Diwali, Diwali well. and mm. then it's Guy Fawkes and it's Halloween and there's so many different things like the Jewish cultures have just had um, I think it's Rosh Hashanah or, okay. it, you know it's so it's it's quite fascinating this time of year we see um, customs and traditions coming into play and it's like you know the just the, how they can unite or how they divide. And a lot of people are not even aware of how they unite and divide. So like, especially like with Diwali and, and people, like some, some people are like very receptive to re receiving, you know, gifts from neighbors like yeah, sweet sweet and things like that. Whereas other people are quite resistant to it. And it's just, and it's the same with Christmas because it's like, you know, and I, it's not to take away from any of the other cultures or religions, but Christmas is, you know, being a, a Christian culture, mm, it's, it's what you see it's in, global. It's, it's global, it's what you see in the, in the stores and a, a, lot, a lot of people can relate mm -hmm. to it because you can see it. Um, but it is, it's, it, and you see it more than, and, and maybe I should rephrase it, we, I, and so we yes. see it in terms of the walking into our supermarkets mm. and, and things like that. So whether it's a checkers or a pick and play or things like that, you see the, all the Christmas decorations. And um, so it's, it is, it's just, for me, it's seeing all those beliefs come out and the different things and they either unite people or they divide people without people even realizing it. And something like, putting up a Christmas tree. What? It's yeah, the 1st of November. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you haven't put up your tree yet. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Do you not celebrate Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is. It, it's fascinating because for me, like in our house, growing up, we were never allowed to put our Christmas tree up until the first week of December. Because mm. December is the month of Christmas. And so we were allowed to have our tree up a certain amount of time, it was one month, well it was actually less than a month because it was only the, fir the first week it was and it was always you had to do it on a weekend and there were certain things we had to do because my parents weren't, they worked so we oh. had to we had to put the tree up on a weekend mm. so if the first weekend was 
you know, and so generally if it was the first or second, that didn't count, you had to go the following weekend. And so it's things like that that you, you, you kind of like, and, and those are things that I remember as a kid. Mm. And traditions. Traditions. Yeah. And then it's interesting, like, um, I've got a friend whose birthday is on the 20th of December or the 21st. So in their house, they were only allowed to put the tree up after her birthday. <laughs> no, because, it's the 22nd. <laughs> yes, because her birthday was important and mm. they didn't want Christmas to override her birthday. So the tree was only allowed to be put up on the 22nd. <laughs> and so it's like, it's fascinating when you start to see the different things and, and beliefs that people have within, just, just in terms of Christmas, mm. you know, and I mean, I laugh, you, you see on social media now, there's people that have already got their Christmas tree up and their house is fully decorated. And I'm like, okay, but no like in my is. mind, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't do yeah. that because I wasn't allowed to do that. Mm. And their traditions might be different, right? Their traditions might actually be that November is when we put up our tree and we decorate our house and it goes all the way until January. And we have, you know, this, we do this on this weekend and this on this weekend and they have a whole Christmas mm. plan. And it, it is, it's fascinating to observe the different sort of, and, and I say cultures, but different beliefs around even just Christmas. Yeah. And like, oh, you know, and like, in South Africa, I mean, we have annual shutdown over Christmas. Yeah. But in other countries in the world, they don't shut down. They fascinating. They, they, you know, they work right up until the twenty fourth, and then they start work. You know, again. Yeah, on Christmas, and then you're Christmas back on the twenty sixth. And you're back on the the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, sorry, I'll send it. They they have whatever the day of goodwill or mm. whatever they call it now these days. Yes. But um, so and it's just. And even schools in some countries just shut down for those two days or three days and that's it. And, and so it is, it's fascinating to see how all the different communities celebrate something just as simple as Christmas. Mm. And how it can create like discrepancies even amongst families. Like especially like new families that are dating or, or couples that are dating or just started to get together and it's you know, you start to integrate families and yeah. it's just like, well, no, well, we don't put our tree up then. Yeah, like, how can you put your tree up on November? Like, our tree only goes up on the 15th of December because, you know, public holidays on the 16th, so, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And, and so even something as simple as that, I see a lot of that in terms of this time of year, is the different beliefs, cultures, communities, and how it... Can divide or separate, you know, separate or bring people together. So I mean, how do you? So if we if we take that into like the business context, right? And you're speaking about December shutdown. But if I'm not, if I'm a Muslim organization, why am I shutting down during Christmas? Like, I understand it, but I'm also sitting here based like based on what you're saying, uniting versus dividing. How do you find that? balance where you are uniting instead of dividing because I'm Muslim, you Christian, you know, how do we, how do you do that? So from, and, and this is where from, and in terms of, you know, Barry is so much more skilled at this, but in terms of ha having a set of rules and a code of honor, mm. so that people know that these are our beliefs before you join an organization, these are our customs, our rules, this is what we do. And, and this is why, you know, something that's come up in our organization re recently and that we've been redoing and refining is all our contracts. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's quite fascinating the things that have come up because it's like, I didn't understand, I didn't know that. And it's yeah. like, well, that's why we're redoing our contracts because there was a lack of clarity as to what happens around, for example, leave in December. Yeah. Like our company, so, you know, in terms of, because we've been a small entrepreneurial organization, you know, it's just kind of happy-go-lucky and, yeah, if you want to go away, cool, no problem. But now that we're starting to grow and expand and we bring somebody new in, it's like, 
we can't operate like that anymore. We have to have clarity. So we have been upgrading and up, you know redoing contracts and things, and everyone's kind of going, ugh. <laughs> like, we, I, what about this? What about that? What? About, how, how's this? Why is that? What? And it's not to make anybody right or wrong, but it's just to get us all on the same page. Because when we bring in a new person next year or this year, they're going to want to know how the procedures work. So what do you guys do over Christmas? Do you have an annual shutdown? Do you have, do you, are you closed between Christmas and New Year? Do we have to take leave then or can we work if we want to? Uh, you know, how does it work? Do we yeah. just, do we get paid for that? You know, you know and it's just... It's having that clarity from a business perspective right up front before you even join the organization. Do you know what their, their procedures are? And, and this is where it is so important, you know, having that contract. Because it's not, you know, a lot of people see contracts as, oh, you know, it's so that you can create some rules. No, contracts are there to protect both parties. Mm -hmm you and me yeah. because you know if I don't have a contract that says you have to take leave during December and you take I don't know three weeks or a month's leave in the year, in the year and you know oh well I, I took a month's leave there and then oh I only I had a month's leave here and then now when I get to December you're telling me I have to take more leave yeah. and and oh well now it's unpaid leave because I already took my four <laughs> weeks and uh, well, you never told me that. Or it's the opposite of you abuse it. You take all this leave throughout the year and then I get irritated mm. because who does silly think he has taken all this leave? Yeah. And so contracts are there to protect both parties. And if you are not clear up front what the exchange is and what the rules are and what the agreements are, then that breaks trust and that's where a lot of people get upset because they're not actually upset that they had to take leave, they're upset that there was a break in agreement and, mm. and now I don't trust you anymore. And and so and this is where, you know, we see it a lot this time of year is that those agreements are not in place because it's cultural, it's traditional. Yeah. So my tradition is this, so you should know that. Yeah. But, yeah. But how would you know that if you haven't been in my family? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, I mean, like you said that so perfectly because I was sitting here thinking, you might be watching this great, well, what does this have to do with your guys' topic? Actually, it has everything to do with it, right? Because if you don't have rules, especially during this time period, that's when things can go haywire. You may not be an organ. I've actually realized that in South Africa, not all businesses are shut down businesses in December. Right. They're still working. So now, I've always been the, under the assumption that we all shut down together. But I've gone to places that I'm like, oh, you're still working. That's crazy. But I wanted to get back to beliefs, right? But more so around like individuals and this time period. So like you speak about your guys' tradition and beliefs during putting up the tree in December. Mm -hmm. How do your beliefs especially around this time of year from your past affect how you operate now in the present as somebody who is has a family or whatever the case may be do those things still kind of do you still carry those things and how do i move past them or move them out of my way and and this is where it, it, it's so challenging because a lot of people don't even realize that they have the belief because it's something they've always done so for example I don't realize that we have a belief that the tree must only go up on the first week of December because that's what we've always done. So, sorry, have you always just done that and, and like sort of like automatically? Yes, because that was <laughs> from the you, you, so, It just becomes automatic yeah. because, you know, the tree goes up the first week of December. That's, as children, that's what we were, and, and I'm not by any means saying that that's what happened in my household, but... <laughs> It, it's just, if, if that is what happened, it's just, well, the tree goes up the first week of December. So now that's what we do. Yeah. And then every year, and what happens is we immediately default to what we know. So we go, last time we did X. Mm. And so we go into, this is how it's done. And I mean, we see that at our events. We, we get people that will come in and, and help us and say, 
the last time we did X, Y, and Z. And I'm going, yeah, but this time is different. This time we're doing A, B, and C. Yeah. And people go, no, no, but last time we did X, Y, and Z mm. because it's what they know. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of Christmas holidays, you know, those kind of things, it's like it becomes this is what we do. So uh, we have Christmas lunch, for example. Um, well, of course you have Christmas lunch. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have Christmas lunch? Normal. But not everybody does that. Some people have Christmas dinner and some people celebrate Christmas on the 24th. Yeah, and they have like Christmas Eve dinner. Yeah. And, or, you know, and, and this is where it becomes, it's something that happens that this is what we've always done and this is what we do. So it doesn't even, it often doesn't even get questioned. Family goes, well, whose place are we going to? Your place or mine? Or, well, last year was at your place, so mm. this year is at yeah. my place. And it's not even a question, it just becomes automatic. automatic. And that's what happens is we go into these automatic behaviors and beliefs. And it's like, you know, then it comes down to Christmas presents and it comes down to spending. And so these beliefs that we have just instinctively or not even instinctively, automatically, we're not even aware of them half the time kick in. So we'll get a Christmas bonus or a 13th check or whatever it is you, your company does. And then we go, well, I'm going to spend it all on Christmas, Christmas presents, presents. Mm. or on food this is or on... It's a savior for me. Whew. I don't and, have to spend my salary. And so without even realizing it, those conditioned behaviors come in and and suddenly it's like, okay, so, you know, have you started doing your Christmas shopping yet? No. <laughs> I've done nothing around Christmas except this podcast. This is the only Christmas thing I've done so far. <laughs> but I have, like, I've met people that they start their Christmas shopping in October. Because Jeez. they plan. And they know that they've got... 10 Christmas presents they're going to buy and they know that they've got this much budget every single month and October they buy three, November they buy three, December they buy four. And it's actually a pretty smart way to do yeah. it. Um, but not everybody thinks like that. Mm. And, and so it is, it's like we rely on our Christmas budget or for some people they get a kick out of spending all their money all at once. Mm. And then January becomes a very yeah, long month. A tough month. <laughs> and, you know, and it's because people haven't planned. And it's because those instinctive or robotic behaviors kick in that I have to spend money. Mm -hmm. And I have to, um, you know, spend this much on, well, I spent 10,000 Rand on this person. I better spend 5,000 mm -hmm. Rand on this person. Or I spend 500. You know, we have to spend 500 Rand per person. You know, that's, yeah, well, that's the, what we do. And without even thinking about a budget or anything like that, we just go into these automatic pre preconceived ideas, con conditions, whatever. And, and we don't even realize that we're doing it. And it becomes about alcohol, holidays, mm -hmm. you know. I just need to relax. You know, I've had a, 2024 was so horrible, so I need to let loose. And we don't even, we go casinos, we go gambling, we go do all these things, and because we have this belief that we deserve it, or we need to relax, or we've had a tough year, or, and so we justify all these habits and spendings, Mm. And then come January, we live with the guilt of, oh shit, what have I done? Because I've got no money. Well, would you say that you just repeat 2024, getting into 2025? Because I said you did in 2023. 100%, <laughs> because it's tough, because you started the year in crap. <laughs> you, you started the year badly, why? Because... I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Call it like it is. <laughs> But you start the year feeling bad because you don't have any money to get to <laughs> January because you didn't plan December or you didn't even think about the money that you were spending or you're very generous and you love giving gifts mm. to people and Christmas is the perfect time to do that. So, you, you know, and 
it's become more about how much money you spend rather than the the actual thought, mm. like you the thought. Of the gift, so yeah. whether it's a jar of jam that's homemade, or you know some bath salts that were homemade, or you know I don't know a five thousand rand remote control car or whatever it is, or drone or whatever, people get so focused on the amount that they spent, yeah. and that's what society tells us, as opposed to you know maybe tr change up some of those traditions and make it different and do. I don't know, Christmas breakfast instead, or you know, do all homemade gifts this year. Mm. Huh, that would be interesting. Um, <laughs> no drawing for me. <laughs> it's not going to be a good one either. <laughs> but it's change it up, you mm. know, or like instead of spending, I don't know, 500 rand per person, maybe you, as a family, if there's 10 of you in the family, go, okay, cool. Well, instead of spending I don't know, the 5,000 Rand on Christmas presents, could you like, pick names out of a hat mm. and spend that on one person like and a buy them? Santa for one person. And, you know, buy a specific person in your family something that they really want, mm. but within a budget. And, or, you know, ask everybody what budget do you have? Or, you know, mm. do you, you know, and, and uh, the, the challenge with that is then sticking to it. Because, yeah. you know, we've done that sometimes and gone, okay, this year, you know, for the cousins, we're not buying Christmas presents for the adults. We're only buying for the kids. kids. Yeah. And, and, then, and, and then what happens is you arrive and you get given these gifts and then you feel bad because you said you yeah, weren't really, buying really. gifts for the adults and yeah. now you've given me a gift and now I feel bad mm. because I didn't give you a gift. Or... You know, I thought we said we were going to stick to, you know, the 200 Rand and this gift, there's no way this gift is 200 Rand. Yeah. And then it's guilt and then, so, and that's where agreements come in place. You've got to stick to the agreement, mm -hmm. is that, or if you're not going to stick to the agreement, tell people, listen, I know that you can only afford 200 Rand, but I would like to gift you a present worth way more than that. Mm. Is that okay? Because and and get people get permission from them because otherwise you don't get the permission, and then it creates upsets. Mm. And you know, the same things happen in, in business. The same things happen in work. We we yeah, it's we commit to give reports by a certain date and don't get them and hundred percent. Just don't even know if the reports exist. Well, you know it doesn't exist because you haven't received it in two months. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely not there. And, and so the same things happen. That exchange, that trust, those agreements are just, you know, it's just so much easier to see it at Christmas time because it's mm. families and it's, you know, people are more aware of it. But in business it happens all the time, but we, we're not even aware of it. I mean, that's an interesting one, how you, how you flip that, because you kind of sit and you go, that level of, if you breaking, and it seems like an insignificant agreement, right? So our agreement is 200 rand, that's what we're spending. I rock up and I spend 500 rand, you spend 200 rand. The agreement is broken, right? And now already the trust is kind of, it's basically gone, because you're looking, you, you now, not upset, but you're like, we had an agreement. And then when you take that straight into business, that's exactly what happens every single day in every business. Like, I wish you guys could see the list of things I have to do that I said I was going to do last week. Broke my agreement. <laughs> and, but, like, so for example, with something like that, see, how do you fix a broken agreement? Well, you've got to communicate. You've got to talk about it. You've got to... So, and this is where it becomes challenging is because now I'm too embarrassed to tell you that I feel out of exchange with you mm. because you spend more money on me. Now you seem ungrateful. And now I seem, correct, mm. now, now I seem ungrateful. I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful because I really am grateful that you, you, you did that. But now I'm feeling guilty, I'm feeling embarrassed, I'm feeling, well, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, so I don't want to communicate with mm. you and let you know that I feel like a failure because I can't spend 500 rand like you did. Yeah. And so what happens is it creates all these emotions 
that genuinely aren't actually there, but we, we get triggered into them because now I can't do what you've done, so I feel less mm. than. So, and it creates all these upsets. But if, if I actually went to you and said, look, I think this is unfair. Yeah. We had an agreement that you were going to spend 200 Rand and I was going to spend 200 Rand and now you spent more. And now I feel like, I, and I don't want to sound like I'm ungrateful, but I feel like a failure because you spent more than what you said you were going to do. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I didn't even realize that, sorry. Mm. And, or you can go, well, you are grateful little, you know? yeah. And but and and this is where it becomes so because it creates all these emotions. It becomes challenging to have these conversations, and and so it is important that you have them without the emotion mm -hmm. that you can express how you feel without the other person taking it on. So in terms of you can then go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel like a failure. Okay, next time I'll stick to the agreement. Yeah. Or, okay, next time you spend 200, I'm going to continue to spend the 500 because I can and I want to. Is that okay with you? Mm. Okay, cool. Now we're on the same. Do you just fix the agreement? You, you fix the agreement mm. and you put the trust back in and then you've got to stick to the new agreement. <laughs> yeah. Don't make agreements that you can't stick to. And, and this is where it's like, and you've got also, you've got to hold your position. I'm sorry, our family cannot afford to do that this year. Yeah. We would like to do X. Okay, no problem. Yeah, we're doing We're this. doing this. And I think like you brought up, which is actually also really important, is being able to like also ask somebody what they can afford, but also not in a way that makes them feel like less than. Less than. So you can be like, look, we want to do Secret Santa, for example, the budget's going to be 300. Can you afford that? Because, and I mean, I've been in situations where there's assumptions. So you assume that I can afford it. You don't know my pocket, but now I'm feeling under pressure to actually put my hand up and go, guys, I can't afford that right now because I don't want to feel like a failure within this group. And then you put yourself under unnecessary pressure to, and that happens so much during this time of year, putting yourself under so much unnecessary pressure that you don't need to put yourself under, right? Yeah, and it, it, even as simple as food. Like, mm. come out to our place. Oh, you bring the drinks and I'll... And then you suddenly go... If they ask me to bring the drinks. What does that mean? Am I bringing drinks for myself? Am I bringing <laughs> drinks for the 50 people? Am I catering for the Am I... Yeah. Must I and, and then we go, oh, flip. And this is where the challenge comes in is because a lot of people are too afraid to ask or they don't want to be seen as the failure or, mm. and, and of course then they rock up with this cooler box full of stuff and everyone goes well, well we're not drinking and now you've spent all this yeah. money and now what do you do with it? Now you told because, me it was big drinks <laughs> now you're not drinking what are you talking about? But I, I forgot to tell you that mm. you know <laughs> that meant you know coke syrup and, and, what is? and water yeah. like or tea and coffee mm. <laughs> or you know, and it's and so it is so important to create clarity around the expectation, and a lot of people don't do that. And then, so he told me he, I, you know, did he ask me to bring drinks or did he ask me to bring a pudding, and how many people? And you know, and then it's like, oh, I don't want to ask him because then I'll look like an idiot. Mm. So let me just bring both. Let me just bring drinks and or. And it's a lot of people are spending unnecessarily, which then they go into January because now there's all this doubt and uncertainty mm. around who's doing what and should I buy this and should I, and you know, or no one said anything about crackers, Christmas crackers. So guess what happened? Everybody bought Christmas crackers. Yep. And, and now we had significant. Just spent two hundred bucks on them. Two hundred. So I don't How small is your family? <laughs> <laughs> but and, and that's it. You spend it's two hundred bucks on crackers, and then it's fifty bucks on serviettes, and then it's you know another two hundred or five hundred bucks on drinks, and we spend all this money unnecessarily. We have all this excess food, mm -hmm. and a lot of people the food goes to waste. Yeah. Or they're freezing it and it's going in the deep freeze and they forget about it. 
Yeah. And then we come to January and we're in a negative and because now we don't know how we're going to pay our rent and well let me wait until you know and we tell everybody as soon as I get paid I will do this mm. and and so as soon as we get paid we're paying for January with January's money that should be paying for February, February. Oh. and so we start the year off in a hole so basically the year only starts in like March April and so we only really get on a level footing in April mm. and then well it's a crappy year because no <laughs> started badly. can you believe it we can't afford to go on holiday in Easter or if you're running a business it's like it becomes yeah, it's April that your year's really shit <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a nightmare because now can you there are so many public holidays in April mm, I can't believe yeah. it and then now we don't have time to operate as a business because we, we're only running three weeks of the month instead of four so our sales go down everything so then May shit because we catching up on April so now June becomes the first month of the year that everything's actually okay mm, yeah. we're back to normal and then from June, July, August things are going great and then September we've now got to start paying for school fees and books for next year and so this is so shit and <laughs> the year is terrible and and so the circle mm -hmm. continues and the loop continues all because we didn't plan for our beliefs and our Ooh. customs and our sort of traditions that we're not even aware of that we do crazy and then 2025 is going to be shit year again <laughs> and that's crazy because like at the end of so you'll get to like the end of december 2024 do all those things you said buy a gift do all of that and then say to yourself next year i'm not doing this this is not going to happen again but because you end up in that loop you get to december 2025 and you do the exact same thing correct nothing changes because Already people are talking of how, it's, I mean it's the f first week of November, but already people are talking about how they're going to, you know, in December I'm going to do this, I'm going to go on holiday, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to... Deal with November first. And people are already in the future of Christmas because it's been such a tough year. We're mm. still catching up from COVID and it's, oh, you know, and da 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 da, instead of... I'm so grateful that this year is not a COVID year. I'm so yeah. grateful that we get to spend it with family. I'm People. so gra grateful that, you know, we can do all these things and we can go to pubs and we can, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't, we're, you know, we're not planning around that gratitude either because some people are already going well this year is going to be so different you know we're going to go to this and we're going to go out and we're going to eat here and we're going to eat there and eat there and eat there and suddenly You've you spent all your money in the future. <laughs> That's crazy. Because you, you're so excited for the, the things that you couldn't do in the past. Oh, so you play catch up. So now I'm trying to do the things I couldn't do last year, be, or in the last two years, or the last four years. I mean, if you actually think about it, COVID was 2020. Yeah. And we're in 2024. Yeah. And people are still, it had such a huge impact. People are still talking about, well, still recovering COVID, from COVID. I'm still recovering from COVID. And yeah. it was actually three, three, three Christmases years. ago. Yeah. But, you know, in COVID, we couldn't do this, so we're going to do it this year. Yeah. I actually did hear about it that this year as well, which is surprising. I feel like it wasn't surprising because I feel like there was a time period where I also believed that. Where I thought that that was the truth of, yeah, we just got out of COVID. And now he's saying it, I'm like, wait, we're in 2024, COVID. But it does feel like we just got out of COVID because it was such a, it was a very, huge yeah. event. But also it was so prolonged mm. and, you know, we're you couldn't travel, by. you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, you couldn't go here, you couldn't without this vaccine or mm. this piece of paper or this or that or and so it's the first year that people have truly felt free mm. because True. it's all year we haven't had to anything yeah 
disruptive so far. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's so people are still in that, well, we're gonna go here, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, or we're gonna, you know, whatever, go to Durban because we couldn't do it when we planned on, you know, because of COVID. Mm. All these things, and so people are already spending their money before they have it, and they're not planning for the, the year ahead as well, and that's creating a lot of upsets now yeah. for January and February, and then December 2025, it's going to be, oh, it was <laughs> I think it's also important to say this because, you know, sometimes you have people, people who watch this and be like, don't tell me how to spend my money. We're not talking to you. You do whatever you want with your money. We're talking to people who... But it, it's, and it's not even about telling you how to spend mm. your money. It's about, are you putting agreements in place with the people that you love so that you can trust each other, so that you can have a great time and also have a good year next, next year. year? Yeah, how do you, how do you, how do you create your future? Right? How do you create a better future for yourself going forward versus Correct. working backwards? So my final question, I saved this one for last because this is just like a doozy. So this time of year, we, you know, you have like Christmas parties, company Christmas parties, you have your yeah, Christmas lunches and stuff like that. How do you, <laughs> because it's things that happened, right? And I'm basic this on like, let's just say a Christmas, an office Christmas party. Yeah, you know, last year Nicole got really wasted at the, at the Christmas party. Make sure that doesn't happen. So there's past behaviors that people are looking at and going, how do we prevent that from happening? How do you just take that out of the equation completely where we're not, I'm not having to monitor you or babysit you, your behaviors because of this big release that you now want to have? So how do you avoid the dramas? Or take out the alcohol. <laughs> First step, always. Oh, a, a sober party is always a better party than a drug one. There's no more, there's no drama at a sober party. Oh, but it, it is, it's just so, and this is where it's putting rules in place and putting, having a code of honor. So it's like, and so I look at it from the, the point of view of even something as simple. In our organization, we, every Monday morning meeting, we celebrate wins. Mm. And so what started to happen is uh, over a period of time, everybody was telling us about all their wonderful wins at home yeah. and there were no business wins. And I, I'm hearing all these wonderful stories about I did this on the weekend and I did that and I saw this and I'm doing this at the gym and I'm lifting this much weight and, you know, and so it became a behavior and it's like I can't cut out wins because that's important mm. but then so what did, what did we have to do we had to put some rules in place and so it then became okay so now you and people were talking for hours as well so <laughs> and then we're sitting talking for hours about hearing about everybody's weekend and what they did and and it's not conducive to business so it's like okay we put some rules in place you have five minutes to speak about your wins and you have to you're allowed one personal win and three business wins or you have to give a minimum of three business wins and one personal win and you're allowed to talk for five minutes and and so we put those rules in place and then we upheld them for a period of time and that's where the trust comes in. We are, everyone agreed to the rules, and then we all upheld the rules. And then now I don't have to have that rule because everybody pretty much gives one or two personal wins, you know, depending on how big or small they are. And then mostly ninety percent of everybody's wins are around business. Yeah. So that changed the behavior is by having those rules in place, and it was not to make people stop talking about their wins mm. it was to put their focus on the right things and that's where often what happens at you know year-end functions oh well it's the company's money so i'm going to have a party i deserve it yep. i am going to drink as much as i can because i'm going to be. i am going to take as much money from the company as i can yeah they made me work overtime this whole year and that's, <laughs> you know if you understand you know you are your business, you know, the, the more you, the less you do of those things, 
the more the business can invest in you. Are you grateful that the company took the time to give you a Christmas lunch or a Christmas party? Are you grateful for those things and look at what they have given you because legally they don't have to do that? Hmm, not that I know of. There's no that it is it, have is a it in your contract party. that you have to have a Christmas party? I mean, no. we've had years where we don't have any mm. Christmas stuff going on because... Yeah, and I think there was never an expectation of it. I think it's always been like a, at least on my side, been, been here for 10 years. Mm. That's a loyalty, people. Um, it's just been a, yeah, I mean, if it happens, it's a great surprise. It's a nice, it's nice to, to have that. But there's never been like an expectation of, guys, where's our Christmas party, right? Like, Where's our Christmas dinner? Yeah, yeah, what's going on here? This is this is unnecessary. No, we've never had that. So, and, and it is. It's just, can you find ways to f to be grateful for the things that other people do for you? Mm. So, like in terms of your company, are you grateful that they're having a Christmas lunch, or do you have this expectation they should mm. and this entitlement? And it's just like, what are you putting in place, like? And I know we were chatting to um, some clients of ours and they were saying that you know they're in a position where they've got some projects and they may have to cancel or leave over December until the projects are complete. And that is a really not great place to be. No. It, it's a great place to be because business is booming, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's also not a great place to be because now you're breaking agreements. Mm. Mm. But all of the employees in that organization already know that they may have to cancel their leave or their leave may be canceled. So now they have an opportunity over the next seven weeks to deliver on those projects so that they're in control, mm. which is really exciting because often, and, and this is where when the agreement is going to be broken, how much time frame are you giving people yeah. to have control over it. Because that shifts it, eh? it does shift it a lot because now it's a thing of, because usually what would happen is the company comes and says, guys, we have this going on, leave is cancelled. That's it. You don't even have a say. And and it's generally a week before you're going away. Or, <laughs> or you, you know, Two days before. <laughs> and, and, that's where it's, and that's where the trust is broken because yeah. it, the company knew that a while ago and they don't tell anybody. Mm. You're waiting for it to change and you know it's not going to because the projects are, they need to be delivered on. But if people have a reason to like improve the projects and work harder, well guys, all our company leave is going to be cancelled. So um, you have six weeks to deliver on all yeah. the projects. So you can either choose to work overtime now or we're going to cancel the leave. We're going to cancel leave. You're going to have to come in then. And then you've got to come in. Mm. And so now employees are now in control of, they're more in control of the, the outcome versus when companies wait until the very last minute. And that's where it comes that effective communication. Mm. It's the same thing as when you spend 500 and I spend 200. Really? If there's no communication, it creates issues. Yeah. And that's what happens in businesses, especially this time of year, because there isn't that communication. And it's not about taking over, you, you know, telling everybody in your organization, but it's are you telling the key people that are in control or can change it or do something about it? So, and, and that's where a lot of times it's people don't, don't see the power of effective communication or the power of agreements and the trust that is created. Smashing. Wasn't the direction I thought this was gonna go, but I'm super excited that it went that way. It's all planned. Everything is just so well planned, people. That's how you do that. Um, so thank you all for watching. Um, it has been really, really awesome to be with you guys here today. Yeah, try and get your agreements in place. Try and stick to those agreements during this festive season. Nicole, any final thoughts before we shut this down? Yeah, just uh, we'd love to see you if you can in person at some of our events. Um, we have Circle of Influence for the rest of the year. Yes. Until the 12th of December on a Thursday. So come and join us. Um, otherwise, we've got our cash flow game coming up this Saturday. If you can join us in person for that, that would be awesome. 
but otherwise yeah it's re it's always awesome getting feedback so would love to get your feedback so yeah let us know if there's any specific things you want us to talk about or chat about so yeah yes indeed um so yeah just to just to repeat on those events that we have coming up we do have yes circle of influence happening this thursday it does end on the 12th um, if you guys check that out anything on our facebook page in the past few days circle of influence will be done at the end of 2024 we are launching entrepreneur hangouts next year 2025 super excited Very about exciting. that um once a month breakfast with the um, Uncovering Greatness team and special guests. It's going to be super, super awesome. So you guys want to check that out when it does get released. Um, and then, yes, on the 9th of November, it is a Saturday at Corporate Conference Center. We have the cash flow game coming up. If you want to increase your financial literacy, especially during this Christmas time period, this, yeah. is, this is the game you want to be playing. So you can figure out... And it's a great game to give as a gift. You might have to break that a 200 rand agreement, but it's fine. Everybody will learn and that will be awesome. So the 9th of November and then the 12th of November, we have the Ignite Your Sales free event, uh, two and a half hours with Barry Mitchell, um, focusing on sales and mindset and money. So that's going to be really, really awesome as well. So you can check out all of our events on www.uncoveringgreatness.co.za. And until next week, we will see you guys again on the Uncovering Greatness podcast. Be awesome. Have a great week. And... Yeah, be awesome. Okay, bye. Bye.